night I was trying to think of what I should talk with you guys about today and I was trying to think of something hopefully that would be of interest to all or some of you or at least relevant so I thought why not talk about food seems pretty relevant to most of us uh, so don't be scared about the truth about food it's not we're just going surface level on um, some things that I think can make shopping for food and understanding your food a little bit difficult and what I mean by that is food marketing. So um, there are people out there who are marketers and they use a lot of buzzwords to brand different kinds of food. Um, I know that that can be overwhelming. So when you walk into a grocery store, on average there's about 47,000 different products that you are being faced with. And a lot of them use these buzzwords like organic and real and no trans fats and whole grains and fresh and natural. And sometimes it can be hard to really know what terms are just um, a marketer spin on it and what terms are actually backed by real claims. So I can't talk about all of these terms in the amount of time that we have. So I wanted to focus on organic because it is the largest um, or the fastest growing food market right now. And organic is actually has the most criteria and um, actually has a legal meaning behind it. So that's what I'm gonna talk with you today about. Um, and let's just start with what does organic mean? So basically it's a term that the USDA uses for foods that have been approved, um, that they've been produced in the methods that they've uh, outlined. So the key things that you'll know when you see this USDA organic seal is that any sort of meat products um, were not raised with antibiotics or growth hormones. And um, that's usually important to most people, but you might not have known that. And as far as plants, uh, plant produce, you'll know that they have not been bioengineered or exposed to radiation. Basically bioengineering is when the seed of that particular plant that you're eating was actually genetically manipulated in a lab. So bioengineers are basically manipulating genes that they think are gonna produce traits that consumers want. So if most people like really big red tomatoes, then they're gonna find those plants that have those genes and manipulate them in a way that they can continue to produce vegetables that look like that. So um, in the long run, that's not obviously a natural process and most people would like to avoid those things. Obviously, no one wants their vegetables to be exposed to radiation either. So good to know that you can avoid that here. Um, also, these plants are not produced with any synth synthetic fertilizers. And what that means is um, most synthetic fertilizers have an excess amount of nitrogen in them. So plants need nitrogen, but they aren't absorbing nearly the quantity that's included in synthetic fertilizers. So what happens to that nitrogen is that most of it goes into runoff and ends up in um, different waterways, so lakes and streams where algae blooms grow because of the excess of nitrogen. And those <coughs> algae blooms basically suck all the oxygen out of the water and um, will kill any of the aquatic life that's living there. And if it's not going into runoff, it's going into the groundwater most of the time. So then the groundwater is coming into our water supply and nitrogen is not a healthy thing for people to be consuming in excess levels. So that's not a good thing either. So basically the, um, the companies that are pumping all this nitrogen into these synthetic fertilizers are not really helping the plants grow in a way that they should be and they're ultimately affecting us in a negative way as well as the environment. Conventional pesticides are a similar um, problem. They create harmful effects for the environment as well as humans. So it's good to know that basically these organic um, conditions that foods need to be produced in um, in this way to be USDA organic are helping the environment as well as all of us stay healthy. So how do you know if your food is organic? Um, it can be confusing because a lot of people think, think there are other terms that are synonymous with organic when in fact they're not. So the best way to um, understand what is in fact organic is to look at the labels. It can be confusing um, because you'll see a multitude of different labels <laughs> And what you need to know is that there's three um, main types of organic labels. So 100% organic, just organic, and then made with or organic ingredients. 
And the way that you can understand how these are different is basically 100% organic is also going to include the USDA organic label because 100% organic means that all of the ingredients in that produce are in fact certified organic by the USDA. Similarly, organic without 100%. So just the term organic means that 95% of those ingredients are organic and it will also have the USDA organic seal. And if it says made with organic ingredients, you'll never see the USDA organic seal accompanying it because that means that only 70% of the ingredients are organic. So how do we know that these things are being enforced? Basically, the USDA has created the National Organic Program, and what they do is they have about 90 um, different organic certification programs throughout the United States who um, work with different companies to get them certified so that they are abiding by all the guidelines for which the USDA has set forward to produce these products. And then the USDA itself has teams who do um, evaluations and audits and uh, enforcement activities. Another term that you might think of when you think of organic is natural. And before I really did a lot of research, I was thinking, okay, in my mind, natural and organic sound pretty similar, but what's the difference? Um, in reality, natural doesn't have a definition set forward by the FDA or USDA. So what they go by is a policy that says, um, if you're using the claim natural on a product, you should not be trying to mislead consumers, and at a minimum, it should not include artificial flavors, artificial colors, or artificial preservatives. But when you see this list, um, organic doesn't do any of the things we talked about at the beginning of this presentation, but um, natural doesn't necessarily follow those guidelines. And the scarier thing is that any other product that isn't making either of these claims can be doing you know, who knows what to produce these products. And so the best thing to do is really look at the labels and do your research and understand what's going into each of these products. A couple other terms that can be um, a little misleading is like, so when you're looking for organic things, if you ever see organic seafood, that's not actually a USDA backed claim. So most likely that's a um, independent certification organization that has their own set of standards to make that claim. So in the US there is no organic seafood because the USDA hasn't put forth um, uh, certain criteria that need to be met for seafood. It's only meat and produce, um, vegetable produce. And also the term free range can be confusing because you'll see that on eggs as well as poultry. But the thing is that the USDA has only set guidelines for poultry. So basically that's just saying that um, your eggs, that they don't actually have a definition for free range. It could mean any kind of number of things. So that's something to be aware of. And the term fresh is also a little bit misleading. Um, there's probably certain things that you think of uh, when you hear the term fresh, but when that claim is made, it really only applies to poultry in the USDA's mind. So all that means to them is that chicken has not been frozen under 26 degrees. So that's kind of interesting that I see fresh all the time and I wouldn't have thought that that was what it meant. So um, all in all, I think it's just good to understand how you can uh, buy produce and know what it means and what in fact you're buying. So I think the best place to start is kind of figure out what is important to you when you're buying produce. So do you care about how that animal was raised or um, the welfare, wh whether or not it had antibiotics or ho hormones, um, what it was fed, the living conditions, whether or not you're buying from a farm or a factory farm, uh, the standards of the workers who are producing that food, um, if it's locally grown, different things like that. It's really hard to find a lot of products that meet all of these different criteria. So uh, it's best to just kind of prioritize what's important to you and then start looking at the labels and figuring out what in fact is in your food because it can be really overwhelming once you start reading a label and you're bombarded with all these different terms and all these different facts. But you're not really sure what's important to you. So I think that's the best place to start. And then just continue your education. Um, there's a lot of different documentaries and articles that you can read. 
I rewatched Food Inc. yesterday when I was kind of thinking of different things that I wanted to talk about. And this documentary hits on a whole nother level. There's, um, it goes into a lot of these different things like the welfare of animals and a lot of other criteria that most people probably don't consider when you're buying food. You're kind of thinking, okay, well, I don't want it to be injected with hormones. That's important to me, but maybe you're not thinking about you know, how are these animals treated? How are the people who are working in these factories treated? And all these different um, things that, it seems like it's no longer really a good excuse to just make purchases because you're ignorant. I know that I definitely don't have the full view of what's going on in these different industries. And I think it's important to become educated so that you know what you're supporting when you buy these different products. Another great way to just kind of avoid a lot of the um, overwhelming questions that happen when you're in a supermarket with all these different labels is just to shop locally and direct. Uh, there's a ton of farmers market and <coughs> farmers markets, and the USDA even has a site which I put on here, and this is a screenshot from it. So you can put in your zip code. So I put in the office zip code, and just you can see that there's four already that are within under 10 miles from here. So um, there are a lot of options for just shopping directly, and that way you can ask them the questions that you want to know, like where are you producing this food, how are you producing it, and um, oftentimes you're going to avoid a lot of the bad things that are happening once food got, gets uh, produced at such a mass scale. Uh, another thing a lot of you are already doing is uh, ordering with chow locally. So it's similar to a farmer's market, it's locally produced um, produce and you know what is in season and uh, it's a great way to shop too. The last thing is um, if you have the opportunity to try to grow your own food, um, you can pass those eggs around if you want. Um, these are pictures from my garden actually and we don't eat the chickens. <laughs> the chickens aren't meant to be the food source here, it's the eggs. So um, we have about seven chickens in a garden. So it's pretty awesome when you know um, the chickens are living a happy life and you know what they're eating and uh, there's a lot of benefits from growing your own food. So that's kind of all I have. Um, the rest is just sources, but does anyone have any questions? Thank you.